So how did that come out and, and how is it, is it chemotherapy killing those cancer cells or and what are the results been like? Yeah, so we were waiting because the, the results had to go to Seattle for them to get everything tested and then we were waiting and it took a few days to get the results back and then um, the oncologist came in and thankfully told us that um, there was zero percent um, minimal residual disease so we were thank god <laughs> that you know we were so blessed to get that um that was huge, that that was was huge. it was that, yes that, that pretty much no no chemo no no leukemia cells found in her in her body okay. so yeah so. so it's killing the cancer cells all the treatment she's been going through oh yes yes because they say that the faster that they go into remission um the better prognosis that she has so you know we're very blessed that you know the chemotherapy kill the cancer cells and now we still have to do all the intense chemo therapy to con to maintain that she stays in remission. So how long does that go on that she'll have to do, oh, unfortunately they will come home now, but she'll still have, she's still doing the chemotherapy despite the fact they know it's killing the cells. Yep. They have to continue that up to make sure it stays in remission, is that what's Yes, okay. yep, they have to keep on um, killing, they keep on throwing different chemo uh, medication at her till that um, the cells don't have a chance to, you know, replicate or try to come back. Um, so that's what they're they're maintaining that so she can stay in remission. So we have intense chemotherapy to do. Um, we usually like it's like a week or two on and then like a couple of days off and then we go back in. So, but we'll do that for the next like definitely the next six months. Um, and then after that we go into maintenance phase and then that's when we can get to the clinic and then we'll be able to be home a lot more often. So that'd be much nicer. So that outpatient phase that you're hoping to get to, which I, I believe you will, because she's such a fighter. So how, <laughs> how will that involve it? One day of chemotherapy every day and outpatient go to the clinic in Scarborough and how old would that be like? Um, as of right now, we heard that it's going to be like once a month for chemotherapy, but it all depends on how she does and how her cycle goes from now until um, the end of the year. So we'll have to wait and see, but we're hoping that it can be once a month for chemotherapy and she'll still continue to get um, spinal um, fluid treatments because they, they've learned a lot over the years of research that they treat all, you know, spinal fluid and, and all the cancer cells, so no, nothing's hiding anywhere. <laughs> So any hiccups or setbacks along the way since we talked to you? Everything going well? She's still taking her chemo like a champ. She is. She's a she's a fighter. She's a champion. Um, yeah. No, she got she has to have um, <laughs> some chemotherapy that um, she has to have a Foley catheter. So she ended up getting a urinary tract infection, but they treated that with antibiotics. So, um, but other than that, um, she's been doing really well. You know, the, the doctors are very happy with how she's been, you know, how she's been doing, um, you know, her prognosis, everything's going really well. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we're just very, we're just very happy with, with all the doctors and the nurses and everything that they've been doing to, for us up at Beverly Bush, um, you know. Can you tell us again what the prognosis and like you said, is sooner you get into remission, the best chance it will stay there and it'll make her life healthier. Tell us a little bit of that as far as... You know, you've come a long way already in just the past couple of months, but she's on her way, it looks like, to possibly having that happen. Because we talked about the odds before when they when it's really young and that you know, she was right on the cusp of that. Yeah, so they decided to treat her um, as an infant, even though she was close to turning one years old. Um, so they're going to treat her really aggressively so she can have a long, happy, you know, healthy life. And that's the goal. You know, the doctor um, is treating her very intensely so that it will keep killing the cancer cells and so they don't have any chances of coming back. And they have found in, in a number of the cases when they do that, it doesn't come back. It's, um, the kids are healthy, they have a healthy life. Yeah, the prognosis is very good. Mm -hmm. So um, we, you know, we, we want, <laughs> we, we, that's what we want, that's what we want to stay, right, Madison? Yes, in remission. <laughs> so she hasn't had any treatments today, obviously today. When no. was the last treatment? Um, she had chemotherapy last week. So, so the big difference in how she's acting today. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. She loves being home, and she <laughs> she loves to be with her. Oh, yeah. She loves to hang out and play, and she's getting stronger every day. Um, she has physical therapy and occupational therapy and speech therapy at the hospital. Okay. Um, so they're supposed to come into the house and help us out that way too, yes, right. um, to get her stronger. So because obviously she's still, um, you know, she's almost 13 months old and she can't crawl or walk yet. Um, but she's had a setback, you know, in the hospital. That mm -hmm. They told us that that could happen with her being sick. And obviously, in the beginning, her they told us with a, she was such filled with leukemia cells that she her body was really hurting, and um, her liver and spleen were such enlarged that um, she hated being on her stomach. Right, and 
and her bones and muscles were hurting and aching so that's why she didn't want to stand but now I think she's finally realizing that she can she finally rolls over now and you know she's getting stronger she actually wants to stand up on her legs so I feel like she's <laughs> I feel like she's um waving <laughs> yes she's waved she claps she can roll over now she wants to actually stand up on her legs she I think she finally realized that her body doesn't hurt and ache anymore and she's much happier so are they optimistic, the clinicians you're working with, that she'll catch up on those milestones? Yeah, they are. They say that obviously with children that stay in the hospital for such a long period of time, um, they can be, you know, set, setbacks and stuff like that. Um, That's another big one there, too. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah she's, she babbles, um, you know, she's, you know, she, she only says a couple words. Mommy's the, yeah. the big one, but, um, but they... Trying to talk. Yeah, she's trying to talk, she's trying to babble, um, but obviously, you know, we have speech therapy at the hospital that comes and helps us out, so. Um. So tell us a little bit about um, the blood drive that, you, that your, your brother's putting on. Yeah. Because she gets platelets and she gets, trans she get transfusions? She has transfusions for, yeah, red blood cells oh, and um, her platelets. Um, in the beginning, she needed quite a f few of them because they were treating her really heavy dose with chemotherapy like straight like almost every day so um she hasn't needed a um she had blood a couple probably like a couple weeks ago uh -huh. um but she hasn't needed platelets for a little while um but that um it all depends on how her counts go we'll determine if she needs to um have blood or platelets but my brother um yeah he's the he's the firefighter in scarborough and um they're doing a blood drive on june 23rd in honor of um madison um to help There is. Um, there's really short because of COVID. It kept a lot of people from donating. So yeah. he was saying not just her, but a lot of other people in the community, you know, um, with the blood go to, to the blood bank, right? It's not just for her. Right. Yeah. No, there's, so the goes to the Red Cross and the Red Cross will distribute it. So it's not directly as, um, giving her the blood, um, but it's helping, you know, obviously if people wouldn't donate blood or platelets, then, you know, they wouldn't be able to, you know, help out uh, Madison. When she first needed blood for her, blood type they had to find specific matching blood for her and they had to find it and they got it down in, in a bank in New Hampshire so mm -hmm. um, you know we we're very fortunate that people donate blood because you know I plan on giving blood on June 23rd and yeah, my mom is too, too yeah. and a bunch of other people are um, right. so we're just hoping that you know not just this blood drive but you know to anybody that can't get to that one to go right. to other blood drives to donate blood to save people's you know lives so I haven't checked the GoFundMe in a while what is it up to now um, well, I haven't been checked? really checked in a checked while, it. but like, is uh, it close to forty-five? I think. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I, I think it's close to forty-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, I know. Derek said it's been a really amazing generosity, and we're gonna put the link in again so yeah. people can donate. No, we're very, you know, we're very blessed with wow. you know all the love and the support we've had from our family and our friends and the community. Yeah, like strangers, we're just, yeah, strangers, strangers like amazing. strangers that watch the news that we don't even know. You know, we're just very appreciative. You know, like we can't believe that you know people have been so generous to us and you know, helping us out, because obviously I'm, you know, out of work still. Um, it's really, you know, I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back to work. I'm going to, um, but it's really hard You're to be, stay um, leave. Yeah, yeah, I'm staying on leave right now because it's really hard to go back and forth from the hospital, you know, right. you have to be there quite a bit, so. I mean, we know, we know the family, uh, the community is wonderful, but it must be really incredible to see the support that you've got. And how does that make you feel as you're going through this? You've had some dark days, obviously, <laughs> Sherry. You've had some really tough days watching her and the, the up and down roller coaster ride. Right? And yeah. now looking her at her here and doing so well. <laughs> no, it is really, it's really heart, heart wrenching because, you know, like, I just, I just can't believe, like, how many people have come out to support us. And, you know, just. I mean, seeing how happy she is, you know, it just, it just makes me, it's just so wonderful, you know, I just, I just, I just really know words. I just really thankful and blessed that people want, want to help us. And, and how does it make you feel as a family? That you're not alone? No, we're not, we're definitely not alone. <laughs> well, it's no. probably very isolating in that way sometimes because you have this very unique situation that, you know, people understand when their children get sick that this is really, really challenging, but you feel very supported, I guess I'm trying to ask you. No, I, yeah, no, I do feel very supported. We're very fortunate in that, we, you know, we're, because of COVID, we can't allow a lot of people to come to the hospital to come visit to help us. But we're fortunate that my mom and my mother are able to come, you know, in and help us out and help us out as much as we can get. And obviously, when we're home, we get much a lot of support from family. Um, so it's a big it's a big help.